Then he continues, at the very sound of the words, your rebirths will cease, his frame thrilling, his heart rejoicing as if refreshed after a bath in a spacious tank. Tears of joy flowing like love welling forth, he held the holy feet of the master and prayed further. Even if I, your servant, am unable to carry out your instructions, you can set me right by your grace. You said just now, there is a means to put an end to your rebirths. I pray, kindly tell it to me and save me. Finding him self-subdued, the master looks at the soul of the disciple and begins to instruct him so that the soul may regain its true nature as a wasp places a well-chosen caterpillar in its cell of earth and then buzzes before it. Well, this is profound, huh? It's coincidental that, <laughs> speaking of being instructed by the spiritual master, last night I had a dream of Shakti. Is Shakti is my mother. <laughs> what can I say? My guru is my father. Shakti is my mother. And we were having a conversation very much like an enlightened mother might have with her son, grown son, uh -huh. someone who has reached the age of reason. And she was saying, well, who are you? What is your nature? What, what is your, the nature of your being? I think was a question. And so I started to reply and I was saying, well, I have a body, but I'm not the body. I have a mind too, but I'm not the mind either. I have consciousness, but I'm not even that. And then I started to get a little upset because I couldn't really answer the question. I couldn't really put a finger on what is my nature. And so she pointed me in the direction and I got the realization that what I am is love. Now think about this for a second. We know that we are Brahman, aham brahmasmi. Huh? So what is Brahman? Well, Brahman is God. And God is defined as that being who is complete and full in six opulences. Wealth, strength, fame, knowledge, beauty, and renunciation. God has all these six opulences in unlimited measure. So then if we are this Brahman, that means we also have those opulences. But then why don't we realize them? Well, we're covered. We're covered by the mind, the body, even consciousness. See, so what is the, uh, the cause? What is the reason? What is the nature of God that God becomes covered? Brahman becomes covered by ignorance, basically. 
And of course, the reason is love. See? Why did Brahman say, I am one? Let me become many. Huh? This is given in the Upanishads. By the way, we follow the Upanishadic teaching that Brahman is the supreme. And we don't follow the modern religious teachings that some form of God is supreme. Because then it would be impossible for them it would be impossible for God to contain all opulences. Any form is limited. Huh? Just like this form is limited by the skin. Huh? Any kind of form, even a mental or form of consciousness, would have to be limited because you would have to be able to say, well, this is the form and this is not the form. So it would have a boundary. And one of the definitions of Brahman is that which has no boundaries, no limitations whatsoever. That's infinity. See, that's completeness. So in that case, why did the Brahman in the beginning say, I will become many? This is a great conundrum. Huh? This is as great a conundrum as the question of why is there evil in the world? And we'll get to that one in a minute. <laughs> Brahman becomes many to love the many. See, Brahman already loves the self. Brahman is one. So in the state of Kaivalya Brahman, unconditioned Brahman, he is conscious only of himself. He is aware of his awareness because he has no, no form or no other boundaries. But he has love. He also loves himself, just like he's aware of himself but he wants to increase that love. He wants to give that love to many, many others. So he becomes many. And the first two that he becomes <laughs> are Shiva and Shakti. He gives Shakti all his power. You know, it's like, it's like an attorney. If you have an attorney, you go into the court you give the attorney your power and it's up to the attorney then to use that power to help you. So in the same way, Brahman gives Shakti all his power. She becomes his advocate. <laughs> and the first thing she does is create a form for Shiva. And this is known as Parashiva or Sadashiva. And then all other forms come from the conjugation of Shiva and Shakti. So right from the beginning, there's love. And this love simply expands and expands and expands to include all beings, all creatures, all worlds. So then you might ask, well, if God is love, primarily or fundamentally, basically love, then why is there evil in the world? Now, this is a question that completely stumps the dualists. <laughs> those who are into duality, those who think that duality is fundamental, can't answer this question because if God is all good, if God is all love, then why has God created evil? And the answer is, God has not created evil. We have. What God has created is ignorance. Avidya. And avidya is necessary, otherwise there could not be a creation. See, Brahman is unlimited 
and without boundaries. So in order to make the creation, he has to make boundaries, saying this is one being, this is another being. Huh? This is one planet, this is another planet. So many boundaries have to come into existence. These are called upadi. Upadi means a limiting adjunct. You know what limiting means, but adjunct means something that is part of something else. Not really integral with it, but associated with it. So a limiting adjunct is something extra that creates a limit around a certain entity. And in this case, Brahman creates upadis, limiting adjuncts, to make the idea of individuality. And the first individuality is Shakti, and then she makes the individuality of Shiva, and so on and so on. We've been over this in a previous series when we talked about the tattvas. We had to explain the creation of the tattvas, starting with the paratattvas, to show how the matrika, the uh, sounds of the Sanskrit alphabet, are used in the creation. So we had to describe all the tattvas to get down to <laughs> that particular tattva and then show how the, the matrika then is used to create everything by uh, Shakti and Shiva having conversations with one another. Well, I felt like I was in one of those conversations last night. <laughs> Shakti is saying, well, what are you? You know, what is your nature? It's just exactly the kind of question that she asks Shiva in the Tantras. And so I was trying my best to answer. But what she was really doing was teaching me by leading question. She was leading me to discover the answer by looking into myself. Because I am also Shiva, I am also Brahma. Uh, these are the principles of the Kaula path. We each have within us the principle of the whole universe, and this is called the Kula. The Kula is the uh, path or the polarity between Shakti in the Muladhara chakra as Kundalini and Shiva in the Sahasrara as consciousness. So this polarity, this, this tension between male and female, this relationship, this vector, is what creates the universe, this duality. And because the universe is based on the matrika, which means vibrations, vibrations are an alternation between a compression and a rarefaction. So when Brahman created Upadi, this is a form of ignorance. And when that ignorance becomes concentrated, and when it becomes mixed with passion, it becomes evil. So although this is not a deliberate creation, it happens because of the nature of vibrations and how different substances and energies mix in the creation, and more or less at random. So it's an unavoidable consequence of the process of creation itself. So this is why one of the roles of Shakti and Shiva at times is to defeat the demons, those who have become evil, uh, those who have the intention to hurt or destroy others, which is completely against God. So this is why a guru should not get involved in politics, because politics is always about hurting somebody. It's always about drawing boundaries 
and saying, this is our turf, and if you come in our turf, we're going to hurt you. So, because the Guru's role is to liberate us from all these boundaries, to point out that you are Brahman, Tattvamasi, you are that Brahman. You see? So, the Guru's role is not to talk about boundaries, but to talk about eliminating and transcending all boundaries and realizing the original self. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum.